Welcome to Wednesday, August 27th, 2025. Your Day Weather Podcast being brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, the deeper monsoonal moisture is shifting a little bit more to the north. So for folks that have been warmer and drier in central and northern Wyoming, Montana, and eventually the western areas in Nebraska and the Dakotas, you're going to start to see the weather move in. For those of you who have been under the clouds and the better rain chances over the last couple of days, you still have rain chances, but the better moisture, the deeper, more widespread precipitation is going to be shifting north and east. So this is going to lead to some very high rain chances for some. We'll show you those areas. We'll also step through all three days of the Labor Day weekend and give you an outlook. I know everyone's chomping at the bit to get that three day weekend started. Boy, there's moisture. Wow, that's not uh, along the front range. That's in the Sierra Nevada. That's over into California where after these clouds built, there was a good rain reported there by John and some hail for quite a while as that monsoonal moisture pushed all the way back into the mountains of California, the deserts of California have been getting rain. That's how far westward the moisture has gone. And you can see, as Chester shows us here, out to cumulus clouds, a good indication of good moisture in the atmosphere. And there really is a lot. Beautiful sunrise yesterday morning before the clouds rolled in in Wind River Country yesterday. The satellite photo, looks very similar to what it's looked like all week so far with this northwest to southeast axis of the deeper moisture starting to drift a little bit more now to the north and east. So this axis of deeper moisture, which shows up very well in the precipitable water, where you see the darker blue colors, this is by noon today, and the darker green colors, but also white, you're going to see the most active showers and thunderstorms, but it's really right here is where the deeper moisture meets the most unstable part of the day to get showers and thunderstorms really going. So this is today by at noon. This is tomorrow at noon. So you can see that shift is going more up into Montana and this is by Friday. The moisture gets a little more diffuse, a little bit more spread out, but you can see where it goes over the next three days. So the next three days will remain very active with the chance for showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures are going to be cool. Flood watches are in effect now for a good swath of Idaho, southwest Montana here. Now notice there aren't any in western Wyoming. The rain does not stop at the border. There is the potential here for some heavy downpours and possible flash flooding despite how dry it's been. Uh, into the western counties of Wyoming. But you can see where we've got the deeper moisture today. It's more north now where the flood watches are. So if you look at the potential for precipitation between now and Friday evening, this is over the next three days, you can see where that, that axis is kind of going. And then that axis shifting a little bit more to the north and east. Remember, this is a model. Don't take it verbatim. But you certainly see a clustering of more of a, the brighter colors here in this area here today through tomorrow. This is a lot of this precipitation is over the next 24 to 36 hours. You can still see the western slope of Colorado has still got some activity, although not as widespread as the last couple of days. So that gets us through Friday and through Friday temperatures will be at or below average for many areas, even the areas that have been a little bit warmer up north. By the time we get into Labor Day weekend, a little bit of a messy map here, more of a westerly flow, which is going to warm our temperatures up, but we've got these disturbances coming on through and the flow isn't strong enough, at least initially to push out most of the moisture. And this is going to be especially true as you see for Saturday, the first day of the three day weekend. So let's step through Labor Day weekend. This is the precipitable water as of noon or 18 Zulu Saturday. So you can see there's plenty of white, green, and still blue. So Saturday is still going to be an active day of afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms. Of the three days of the three-day weekend, the highest probability of getting rained on is going to be Saturday. 
but as you notice, we're starting to see some brown here in Arizona, back a little bit further west, although there's still moisture back here, but it's thinning out. It's not as abundant. So thunderstorms look like this on Saturday. So the front range of Colorado down into New Mexico, up into parts of Wyoming, there's going to be afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms, the mountains of northwest Montana, and even back here in the Cascades is going to see some showers and thunderstorms, helping those folks cool off a little bit. So even where you see the lighter blue patches, you've got the risk of a thunderstorm, but certainly not as extensive as we're seeing now. As we go into Sunday, we're going to see that moisture thin out. We're also going to show you temperatures. Now, these are the forecasted high temperatures for Saturday, so still quite cool under that deeper moisture, especially in this area right here. Temperature anomalies are still going to be significant. These are highs, the forecasted highs, so you can see it is not going to be a hot Labor Day weekend at all, at least in the Intermountain West. Of course, in the deserts, it's going to remain hot as you would expect it to be. But boy, these are very comfortable temperatures to start the weekend. But with the air getting drier, which is Sunday, you can see it's subtle, but the air is beginning to dry out some Sunday, except up here in the Dakotas and southern Canada. So you're going to see the thunderstorm activity much less, at least in the Intermountain West, thunderstorms peel back. Now, there's another area of moisture down here, which may be a factor next week, but notice southern New Mexico and southeast Arizona picking up thunderstorms again. But for a lot of the Intermountain West, yes, there will be isolated showers and thunderstorms, but they won't be widespread and it gets a little bit warmer. But if you look at those high temperatures on Sunday, very comfortable, very, very comfortable, except in the deserts. Monday, a lot like Sunday. There's moisture around, not a lot of it but there's going to be enough for thunderstorms. Maybe they pick up a little bit on Monday, but they're not going to be very widespread. And temperatures on Monday inch up a little bit more, getting more, let's say, like late summer temperatures, but still, those are very, very comfortable temperatures for the Labor Day weekend. Heat starts to build back here across the west again. So we go through the last days of August with this monsoonal moisture. Early September looks pretty nice with thunderstorms thinning out and not as widespread. Is this going to leap into a period of really hot summer weather again? The answer is no. We're looking at some good agreement in the long term of a strong cold front driving out of central Canada into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes again. So this is not driving in from the northwest like this. So the coldest temperatures relative to average will be east of the Rockies. However, Along the front range, the eastern slopes of the Rockies, cold air will back up against the, the front range and plains again. So what this is going to do is basically do a repeat. We're going to see another big cool down for a lot of the central and eastern United States, the middle to the end of next week with the western fringes of the cold air backing up against the Continental Divide. And there it is. These are the temperature anomalies by next Wednesday. Boy, that's an impressive dagger of coolness coming in to a lot of Canada and a lot of the central United States. And you can see the, the purple here backing up. That's upslope. That's going to bring low clouds, probably a chance of rain showers. Now, some of you might be looking at this anomaly and going, is this going to be an early freeze? The answer is no. We're not there yet. We'll talk about average frost freeze dates here, maybe tomorrow or Friday. But this is certainly going to reverse temperatures again and bring them right back on down. But the colder air stays east of the divide in this situation. And if you look at the coldest morning, which will likely be Thursday, we're not seeing any hard freeze potential. We're seeing a lot of 40s, lower 40s. Now, the Laramie Valley up here in the Shirley Basin areas around Elk Mountain, we've got some upper 30s. We've got some middle to upper 30s in North Park, Colorado. That's not unusual, really, for this time of year. But a lot of the areas east of the Continental Divide are going to have a taste of fall towards the middle to the end of next week. Have yourself a great Wednesday. We'll have more for you tomorrow.